Go ahead, punk. Make my day. Somebody's been watching a little too much TV. So you want to, uh, you want to carry a firearm. You want to get your concealed weapons permit. Carry one of these bad boys around. Let's talk about that. Let's find out what it is that you, uh, that you want to carry a weapon for. I mean, have you really considered that question? Have you asked yourself exactly what it is you're looking for? Uh, you know, right now this is just you and me talking. So you need to be extremely honest with yourself. And uh, this is going to be the real down and dirty look at what's inside of you and your desire to carry one of these every day outside of the house, concealed. Uh, we've all been watching the news. We all are aware of what happened down in Florida uh, with the uh, Zimmerman shooting. Um, you know, so this is probably a good time to talk about it. And if you're already carrying one of these, let's, let's reflect. Let's discuss it. Let's find out what's going on. So... Have you considered, now that you decided that you want to carry a firearm, you want to carry a weapon with you every every day, I mean, clearly you're aware of the obvious. I mean, let's talk about it, though. Let's talk about it. What is this thing? What is this? What was this weapon made for? Or the weapon that you have? Or the weapon that you're considering buying? Why do they make these things? Uh, I'm going to state the obvious. These, these firearms were designed to take human life. Now, you know, there's all kinds of debates where, you know, uh, you'll get people talking about, well, you could also shoot people in the legs and in injure them, and you're supposed to shoot to stop, not to kill. That's all bullshit, in my opinion. These are tools of death. That's what these are. They're designed for one thing. They're designed to push a projectile out of the barrel of this weapon and into a human body. Okay. And uh, the ramifications of a projectile of lead flying through your body, uh, in many cases, and in most cases, quite frankly, uh, uh, result in death or great bodily injury. So now that we have that ironed out and we understand that, uh, I'll ask you again, have you strongly explored your reasoning? Uh, have you considered the ramifications of taking a human life? Now that sounds like a pretty um, basic question, but I'm going to tell you from experience that there are many law enforcement officers, maybe even watching this video right now, many, many law enforcement officers who carry weapons every single day of their lives who have never seriously considered the ramifications of taking a human life. I mean, what, what does that mean to you? Um, what does it mean to you to put five or seven or whatever pounds of pressure on, on a trigger and cause a human being to stop living? How does that affect you in terms of your religious beliefs? Do you go to church uh, every Sunday or do you go to synagogue or the mosque? And do you... Uh, strongly oppose the, 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 the concept of taking another life um, to the point that it will affect your judgment and cause you, you to delay your actions or to hesitate. Uh, more than a few police officers and soldiers have lost their lives because when it came down to it, when it came down to that microsecond of life or death, there was a hesitation. And those are people that had not resolved that question that I'm asking you. I want you to look deep, deep inside of your soul and ask yourself, are you ready to take a human life? There's no shame in, in, uh, in, in any of those, the answers that you're going to come up with. 
you you see if you carry a weapon and you are not cleared with this if you're not if you haven't already resolved this issue and you carry a weapon then you are certainly a danger to yourself and to everybody around you if you're a police officer you're a danger to your partner who fully and understandably expects you to be on your game and to be ready to react with deadly force should that be the case should that be required you understand we react to actions that are that are forming against us okay because uh, hopefully we're not murderers I hope I'm not talking to a murderer out here I'm talking to law enforcement military good American citizens who want to carry weapons and so we uh, carry these weapons not to commit crimes but to prevent death or great bodily injury to ourselves or to others so we have to have that understanding we have to be very clear on that okay but if we are are hung up uh, when it comes to taking a human life and we're in, we're incapable of doing it fluidly and smoothly you know making that decision coming out and putting lead down range into the bad guy if we hesitate then we're a liability and uh, you know I would hate to have uh, an innocent person a loved one or my partner loses life because I never resolve this issue so that's something that you need to resolve uh, with yourself okay get it get it right if it turns out that you're not capable then you need to get out of the law enforcement profession or you need to put yourself on a in a do in a desk duty or some some position that doesn't require you to be armed I mean come on man we're talking you know what could be more important what could be you know you think of politics you think of uh, you know retirement planning you think of uh, you know your family issues but all of it revolves around the one concept of this thing we call life so what could be more important than a discussion about how to protect life and how to extend life yeah so um, the way one of the ways we have to do this we have to be very honest with ourselves and put ourselves in a position where we're not going to be a liability okay so if you're not capable of taking a human life don't carry it a firearm that can be taken from you and used against you or other people okay so make sure that, that that's something that you have clear in your head before you apply for your concealed weapons permit or before you uh, apply for the police department or, or whatever you decide to join the military um, you know let's look at the pros and cons of carrying a weapon I'll start with the cons I mean does anybody out there uh, that doesn't carry a weapon every day does anybody think that this is a comfortable thing to carry? No, I know that they have small, small weapons, and, and uh, you know, I. But make no mistake about it, this is not made out of cotton. This is a big chunk of metal, okay? And uh, to say that it's uncomfortable is a gross understatement. Now, for those of you that are out there carrying weapons right now, concealed, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Um, anybody that's been carrying a concealed weapon for any length of time and I've been carrying a concealed weapon since 1984 uh, we've spent countless dollars on a on different systems and holsters and as you get older and you start to put on a weight you know you try and belly bands to conceal weapons ankle holsters uh, shoulder rigs all kinds of paddle holsters do we carry it in the front the back cross draw right side left side we've gone through it all and most of us are still not hundred percent comfortable with what we have but we've we, we just tough it out you know we find the 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 lesser of the evils we find the most comfortable of the uncomfortable and then we, we live with that so you know they're not they're not comfortable um, we know when you carry a weapon uh, and you know if you're looking to get a concealed carry permit and even if you have one already my advice to you is that you carry every day I don't understand it nor do I condone this uh, I carry a weapon today but not tomorrow it's too hot tomorrow um, I only carry it when I go to certain areas but for the most part I leave it in my car uh, that's that's absolute irresponsible uh, gun um, ownership in my opinion uh, and we can talk about why that is uh, first of all to carry it every day uh, it becomes second nature to you it's like wearing a watch you know when I when I leave the house I get my keys I got my make sure I got my watch on you know I'll be out uh, out getting into my truck and there's no independent memory of me putting my my weapon uh, onto my body because it's a it's muscle memory it's what I do every single day 
So if I were to go out of the house without a weapon, it would be like going out without my watch. I would feel weird. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the things. So it also, the, the, one of the benefits is, of course, that for me to reach for the weapon is a very natural thing because I reach, I put, I put it in its place. I take it out at the end of the day. I know exactly where it is. I don't have to think about it. It's just like I can take my watch off and put it on without thinking about it. Yeah. So this is what we want to do. We want to carry them every single day. Now, if I go out with a bunch of friends and they want to go out, you know, drinking, then I have to take that into consideration. Do I want to go to a bar and drink when I got a weapon on? Not only are it, many places don't allow that legally, but it's not the responsible thing to do. So it looks like I'm the designated driver, okay? Because I, I don't want to be the guy that ends up in a shooting and then has to go get a, you know, find out that I'm under the influence of alcohol. Okay, because that's going to add a whole new component to the case that might well have been justified, but for the fact that you're blowing a, you know, 1.9 or whatever the hell it is. Um, so, you know, the other thing, you, you, there's a lot of, we could go on all, all day long about the, the cons of it, you know. Public restrooms, you go, go to take a crap in a public restroom. Do you know how many people have left these things laying on the back of the toilets? Uh, that's, that sounds funny to somebody that's not maybe carrying a weapon every day, but trust me, you ask around and you'll run into people that have done that. I said, I haven't done it. I give you my word I haven't done it, but I certainly know people that have. Very dangerous. How'd you like to go to a mall, go into the bathroom, and then go out shopping uh, 20 minutes later and realize you left your loaded weapon in the, in the stall? Uh, I don't want to be that guy, and I'm sure you don't either. So, so those are things to consider. Um, you know, people that leave them in their cars, it's another, that's another liability, you know, where, hey, I'm going out, I'm going to go in the mall or the restaurant, I'll leave it in my car. More than a couple people have been killed during robberies, um, laying there proned out, getting executed with a perfectly functional loaded weapon in, the, in their car out in the parking lot. Didn't do them any good. The other thing is that you get your car stolen and now the bad guy has your car and he also has your weapon. And, you know, you don't want to have be the guy that that lost control of his weapon and then finds out that it was used to gun down two cops and three civilians later on. You don't want to be that guy either. So, you know, there are a lot of, certainly a lot of cars. Or cons, not cars. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, every time you put one of these on, you subject yourself to not only a criminal uh is something actually that gets interpreted as a criminal act and you've got to fight your way out of that one but uh, there's a civil aspect to it you open yourself up to civil liability every time you touch one of these things uh, you know if I didn't check this right now and know that it was completely empty I could have an accidental and the bullet conceivably could fly through the window and kill the neighbor excuse me Murphy's Law says so a lot to consider So why 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 do I carry a weapon? I really only there's only one pro that I can think of, and that is it's a lifesaver. Okay, it personally, and this is you know you have to answer these questions and and have this discussion with yourself. Yeah, but I can tell you that my reasoning is a simple one: is that I refuse. You know, I just absolutely refuse to allow somebody to just arbitrarily take my life or the life of my loved ones. It's just not going to happen. Uh, that's just a that's just a me thing, man. I mean, um, you know, I've been down that road before, and I'm still here talking to you. So clearly, uh, I, I'm I'm highly confident in what I'm saying because I've lived it and done it. Doesn't make me a hero. It just makes me somebody that 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 has thought things through. And I live by, by my own standards, you know, and the standards that that we all should have. Um, and not to sound like a badass, but the fact of the matter is, uh, I'm not afraid of death by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I, I don't want to burn to death. That's probably one one fear I have. It's a method of death. I'm not afraid of death, but uh, I'm just not going to let some punk blow me away or cut my throat because he didn't like the way I looked at him when I was walking through the parking lot. That's not, my life is, is, is much more valuable than some other idiot making a decision that I'm going to stop breathing. It's just never going to happen. I'm not going to allow it. So that's me. Um, something that you should, you know, consider as you're thinking about getting a, a concealed carry, uh, or if you have one, again, this applies to people that have them as well, is what training have you had? Did you go to, I mean, certainly I hope that you're, uh, 
you're not one of these guys that took an NRA online course and now you're carrying your weapon because that's not going to cut it for a lot of reasons that we don't have time to get into. It's just not responsible, number one. You need to, if you're going to, if you're going to carry a weapon, something that's capable of taking life, something that was intended to, uh, designed for that, then you owe it to every single person around you, including the bad guys that you're going to, that you may run into to have the proper training. You have to seek out proper training from, from, and I rec highly, of course, uh, highly recommend NRA instructors. But there are many, many different instructors. You go on these gun forums, and I'm sure people in your area can refer you to instructors. But you have got to put in the hours and the money to be trained so that you understand uh, that there's a lot more to carrying a weapon than just pointing it at somebody and pulling the trigger, okay? Um, you know, what, what about your family? Your family needs to have training, even if it's you giving them training. You know, we walk into a restaurant, uh, we just did it last night, and, you know, my wife absolutely knows where to seat herself. It's just second nature, because she knows where I want to sit. i got to command the best view of the place, not because I'm paranoid, but because that's part of my situational awareness. I, I know when I walk into a room where my threats are, uh, you know, more possible threats are, and I can have a lot of, uh, you know, I can see who's coming in, who's, who's maybe, if there's a window out to the parking lot, give me a little bit of a heads up, you know, as to what's going on. Doesn't mean, like I said, I'm not being paranoid, I'm being alert, I'm staying alert. Okay, you, you need to know where your line in the sand is, so to speak, now, before things happen. Um, you know, you've got to understand when you will escalate an incident to the use of deadly force okay this is this is critical you can't be forming these opinions in the middle of a conflict because you can't trust that kind of judgment you're you have to know you have to go through these scenarios in your head over and over and over and over again and pay attention to what's happening in the world like the Zimmerman case ask yourself what would you have done what would you have done if you were him what did he do wrong? What did he do right? Look at all of these cases, okay? Uh, not pushing my channel, but look look at some of the videos I've just recently put up on my channel that, that are studies of some, uh, some police shootings because you can learn a lot, whether you're a civilian or a cop. Look at these things and ask yourself, would I have done the same thing? Uh, don't be afraid to second-guess people, even if they've lost their life. Like I said in one of my videos, it's one of the last gifts somebody can give you as an opportunity to look at a video of them in a shooting into a, or, or study the, their, the details of their shooting and, and find it, different things that you could have done better or that you can do in the future that can protect you. So, um, you know, you need to understand deadly force, okay? <laughs> you know, the, the Zimmerman case... Uh, and, the, you know, here Trayvon Martin is, is uh, no longer with us. Uh, and I'm not going to debate the case or get into that case right now, but I think that one of the important takeaways, the one, and that's not a done deal. This is still unfolding. We still have a trial to go through. But if you are missing the main point, then shame on you. The main point of the of the Zimmerman and, and Trayvon shooting is there's a couple of main points. The number one point is that somebody lost their life, okay? So that's never a good thing when somebody loses their life, no matter who it is, okay? That's a, that's a tragedy. Okay, you want to make sure that you do everything humanly possible to avoid being in a situation where you ever have to use this. If you carry your weapon for 50 or 60 years and you never have to point it at a human being, you won. You are a responsible human being. You're a responsible gun owner and a gun carrier. And you've done things right. You made great decisions. Okay, you don't want to put yourself in a position to where you got to use, you got to resort to deadly force because now you become the bad guy okay and you know like I said I'm not gonna get into the particulars of this case uh, was this was a shooting justified let me one of the things that you need to understand and that let's we'll use the Zimmerman uh, shooting in, in a vague way you have to understand the concept of reasonable the reasonable uh, man concept is it's a standard that is used in courts of law throughout the United States okay you're gonna Every time you pull this trigger, you're, you're more than likely going to end up in front of a jury of your peers. And the standard that they're going to be 
uh, dealing with is what would a reasonable person in your situation have done? And you'd better hope that they come up with the with the judgment that a reasonable person would have acted just as you did. Okay, um, so juries are very unpredictable. Okay, we know that. I mean, O.J. Simpson was was found innocent, and you know I don't care what you think. Quite frankly, uh, I know for a fact that he was guilty of those murders. I know that for a fact. Um, but I, I like I said, I'm not going to debate that case here. Uh, but let's just say this, that juries are extremely unpredictable. Um, the politics of the time, look, I would, you, you'd be a fool to, to not recognize the fact that, that current politics and, and socioeconomic, uh, the details that are happening that they will play a role in 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 how certain things are sh shake out you know uh i would certainly hate to be the next white guy in florida to shoot an african-american under any circumstances i mean can you imagine you know and is that fair that you would ha that people in florida that white guys in florida have to worry about that no it's not fair but after like i said i've been carrying a weapon f since 1984 i'm i'm uh former military retired lapd look man i'm going to tell you one thing i know for sure life is far from fair there's nothing fair nothing fair about life so get that way out of your head if you're looking for fairness don't carry a weapon okay um, you have got to be articulate. You have to articulate a reasonable fear. If it comes down to deadly force, you have got to art be able to articulate a reasonable fear of death and or great bodily injury. You need to understand the use of force, of deadly force laws in your state, in your particular state. You have, you know, this is your obligation to get up, to, to, to drill in and read and learn so that you're not figuring this out with your attorney. God forbid you have to use deadly force. You know, in the unfortunate case where that happens, where you have to use deadly force, you need to be on your game, okay? Every word that comes out of your mouth from the second, from before you pull that trigger. Is gonna, as you see in the Trayvon Martin, uh, the Trayvon uh, Martin and the Zimmerman case, every word that was uttered from, you know, that the witnesses heard, that the 911 operator heard, these are all going to play a major role in what happens to you, man. You're left at the mercy of jury, uh, of a jury, you know. So, you know, have your shit wired tight. You know, if you have to use deadly force, you have got to be sure that every member on that jury is, is going to think to themselves, man, I would have done the same thing because the you know, poor guy had no choice. And again, like I don't want to beat a dead horse, but is uh, race and politics, are, are those going to play a part in, 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 this, in the scenario? They sure are. They sure are. So, you know, understand what is going on around you, you know, and make a wise decision. Um, you know, and if you still, if you still decide that carrying a weapon is for you, and you want to, and you want to go through what it takes to get a concealed weapons permit, then get the training that you need. Get proper training. Understand the laws. Understand. Make 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 peace within yourself in terms of uh, the ramifications of taking a human life or paralyzing somebody for the rest of their life. Are you going to be able to deal with that? See, I can tell you my method of, of dealing with that is, is, is very simple. I know my line in the sand that we talked about just a little while ago. I have that. So in other words, if you cross that line in the sand and, you, and you, your actions or series of actions have put me into that position where I've already made my decisions right now as to what I'll take and what I won't take in terms of injury or death, then everything that happens is a direct result of your actions, you being the bad guy. So, so I, uh, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. And you need to be too. So give it some thought. Let's get some dialogue going here. Post your, co your thoughts and your comments and, and, and your questions. And let's let the groups, you know, as, we, as, this, as comments build, let's discuss this and answer each other's questions because it's really all about staying safe. Thank you for watching.